Who goes there, friend or foe? One day, maybe this won't bother me so much. Martinos! <laughs> hey, Jim, hey, McCauley. Hey, Syrian. Okay, so if you uh, saw the Facebook posts, you know that today's topic will be Bokken. Um, no worries. Um, today's uh, topic is Bokken. So uh, if you haven't yet got something to use, I recommend you try and find something fast. A broom handle will be fine. Anything that can be roughly standing in for this is all you need. So we're going to be looking at um, 6 through 10 of the Bokken sequence, so um, from Ropon, Nanohon, Hapon, Kyuhon and Juhome. Uh, obviously this is solo practice, uh, so I will be demoing and coaching the Shte side predominantly of the, each technique. We will have a look briefly at Uke's attack so that Shte's movements have context and make sense, uh, but we are again just really prioritizing Shte's movements. Almost there. Uh, so there's five moves. Hey Kit, get a sword, join in. You alright Paul? Um, so yeah, so uh, we'll be spending about five-ish minutes on each one, but the aim is to build a sequence all the way through, um, which I would then really like to see what you guys are doing on that sequence. So if you can, after this video, record yourself performing Ropome, Nanohome, Hapome, Kyuhome, and Juhome, with or without a partner, um, and send it in, uh, then we can chuck it up on the Facebook page and um, you know, sort of show each other what we're getting up to. Hey Paul! I'll give it a minute or so longer. Hey Kaya, that's not good enough, Kit. Uh, so, by the way, if you haven't got a Bokken, um, then I can wholeheartedly recommend NineCircles.com uh, or .co.uk. Uh, they're a really good quality supplier. Uh, my two Bokken are both from Nine Circles, and I think I've had them both almost as long as I've been training. So these are about. 15, 14 years old now, um, and I've not got any complaints at all. Um, parents and kids, I would recommend this one. Uh, it's a slimmer, lighter model. It's ideal for younger students. That's why I bought it uh, first when I was a beginner. Um, this one, however, is pretty cool. This is my grooved bucket, um, and it's awesome because 
don't know if you've heard it, but it whistles. It's really good fun. If, you, uh, if you'd like one, um, then give us a shout and we can sort one out for you. All right, Adrian. Okay. All right, we'll start with a quick warm up. That is the whistling bocken, yeah. Okay, uh, so most of this is going to be using our shoulders, but we're going to try to do a, a, a nice and light overall warm up. So start bouncing. Remember, as always, copy along. This thing has no purpose if you're just watching. So get the arm really moving. Like I said, the shoulders are going to be used quite a lot. Circle the arms. Charlie! Being completely selfish, can I just get a thumbs up from everybody in the comments from my sister, uh, Kit, who's just finished her degree. And the other way. Shoulders backwards. And circle the hips. Um. <laughs> and other way. And hands. Chin up and down. I've not seen Dan signing in yet, but if you're watching, Dan, does your neck still crunch like a cement mixer when you do this? Good to see you, Caitlin. How's your back doing? Be careful today, okay? Okay. So, we're going to start with number six. You all right, Fergus? So starting with number six, Ropon May. Say it with me, Ropon May. That's number six. Ropon May is similar to number three, Sambo May, in that it's a fairly explosive single movement. Okay? Um, so we'll start by looking at the attack. Uke's attack is a Shomen Uchi. So copy along with me, and if you're not familiar with the vocab, copy what I'm saying. Okay? Shomen Uchi. So the Uke, the attacker, will deliver an overhead front strike towards Shay's head. So that's what we're looking at dealing with, this straight attack coming towards us. The response to that is not to block. So if we imagine the bomb is striking towards me, my response is to, as he raises his arms, to slice his armpit. So we're looking to, if we were doing it for real, cutting in underneath uh, the shoulder and exiting through the side. Now obviously when you're training, you don't make contact, okay? So we mine it. So from here, the sword slips underneath without making contact. So if you watch me from the front, copy along. We're gonna slide out to our right. The sword angles so it faces the same way that we do. And we finish in a Zanshin style posture. Hey John, right same. Hey, Mum! Mum, join in. So here, so you're going to slide out with your right. Sword turns and hit the Zanjus up posture. Straight back leg, straight back, angling your body into the movement so that it's powerful. Okay? Nice and slow off the side here. Now, one of the things I want to uh, make sure you're all aware of when you're doing this, do it with purpose. Okay? We are not just swinging sticks around. If that's what you're doing, yeah, you're gonna have fun, but you're gonna learn nothing, and I've got no interest in I've got no interest in doing that. I'm not here to be entertainment. When you strike, <laughs> attack, breathe, kiai, make it meaningful and purposeful and powerful. Give it context. So it's not just 
So that's, the, that's number six, that's rope on me. We're going to do that to the count now. So every time I count, we're going to go, can I execute the technique? And then back again, okay? With me. Out! And back. Knee! And back. Sun! And back. Shi! Back. Go! Now what we're going to do is I am going to be your uke. I'm going to be your uke. So all I will be doing is delivering the strike without killing my camera. I'll be delivering the strike. Normally, if we were training together, you would be giving me the commands. Um, and because the lag is real, we're not going to be doing that. Okay? So whenever I strike, I want you to execute the technique we just practiced as if we were together in the same room, okay? I'm not going to tell you when it's going to happen. You've got to watch and read the signals. Ah! Did you get me? Did I get you? Who knows? When you cut out, breathe big or even ki yourself. Ah! Okay. So that's number six. Rope on me. Now we have a look at number seven. Nana hon me. Um, I think it's fairly safe to say that for most people who know this, number seven is their least favorite. Uh, which is always the case with things that are difficult. Number seven is tricky because it's different and it's unusual. Normally, the attacker would, for most of the Bokken techniques, delivers a straight vertical cut. Or at the very least, attacks on their right hand side because it's genuine, generally more powerful. With Nanohome, Uke attacks with a left side of the Okuman, diagonal cut to the neck. So from here, the attacker raises steps and cuts on their left, aiming for Uke's neck and shoulder just here on that diagonal line following the gi. Okay, so it's not a flat beheading and it's not right in the middle, it's diagonally here. Okay? So we're gonna practice that by itself a few times. If you've got somebody in the room who trusts you to not hit them, use them as target practice. Do not hit them. Raise, step, cut in at neck height, and then reset. Again, joining in, raise, step, and cut. To repeat myself, strike with purpose now, okay? We're not just waving gods of wood around, we're attacking. So make it feel like an attack, even if there's no contact. So here, raise, out, and back here. Raise, out, out, and back. Whenever you attack from high, the strike starts above your head. So whatever position you may be holding the sword in, it comes up before delivering the attack, otherwise there's no power behind it. So here, raise, enter, ah! So that's Uke's attack, that's what we're dealing with as Shte, okay? So, the block. The sword is approaching me from my right. It's coming in on this side. Now we're not gonna Errol Flynn it and swing our sword into theirs, that's how you destroy your lovely shiny katana. Instead, we're going to exploit the opportunity. You watch me as the attacker. As my sword is coming around, my center is unguarded. Okay? So as the defender, rather than blocking the sword with a large movement, we advance down the center and keep our own sword between us and the attacking blade so that we are protected like so. Okay? So slowly in with me now. Slowly in with me. Right foot forwards. As the sword comes towards you, you're going to step forwards and a small twist. So I'm not side on. I am not kibodachi, horse riding. 
and I'm not square ones though because I've got to be able to have my own sword on my center. Just a small twist here, okay? So you're moving down the center with a small twist. Nice and slowly a few times. Advance down the center and small twist like so. Make sure you're doing that. Moving forwards. Keep your eyes forwards. If you're watching the camera, watch it like it's my eyes. Okay? If you're working with your partner, look at their eyes and don't take your eyes away from them. So here, advance down the center like so. If you watch me from the side, here. By the way, yes, there's going to be some lag and delay, but if you've got a question, chuck it into the comments. Uh, I'm going to be watching them as close as I can, so if I see something that um, I can help with, I'm going to jump on that. So if you want me to repeat something or explain something, just speak up. Make this your class. So slowly again, advance down the middle, there. So now we're going to do that to the count. Every time I count, we're going to move in, okay? Ouch! Move in and back. Knee! Move in and back. Sun! Make sure the sword is still threatening forwards. And back. Shi! And back. Go! And back. So that's the first move. So we've blocked their cuts, but now we've got to get rid of them. So we're here, their sword is against our sword. I don't know how well you can see that. The next thing we do is bring our sword to their throat, and then this is where Bob sort of becomes insufficient, but we walk them backwards three steps. So copying along, we're going soft and gentle. Move in, first step and block. Push towards their throat, and now we're back in camera, and then three steps forward, trying not to leave the camera shot. So here, copy long slow, step forwards for the block, push in, and that's the shift, this hip moving in, it's the same mechanics as here in the RSID. And here, one, two, three. When you're working with your partner, it's really important that the two of you move together at that point, okay? Otherwise, somebody gets turned into a kebab, okay? So here, enter to block, sword is still threatening, drive in, one, two, three. Okay. So now we're going to do that entire thing to the count. And then we're going to build the sequence. So we've got two techniques now. Okay. Out! Block! Power! Step, step, step. And back again. Knee! Block! Power in! Step, step, step. And back. She! I think. Block! Power! Step, step, step. Go! Block! Power in! Step, step, step! Now I'm going to be your UK. So I'm going to attack the camera, just like last time, and you are going to do the block. You can then do the walk forwards, I'll give you time to do that, uh, but just don't break your own screen. So every time I strike, you are going to block it. And then you move into my throat and walk me back. Good, okay. Block, push it down. Your sword is now at my throat. Walk me back three times. Try to stay in sync with my movements. If you watch the Thursday classes, then this kind of no contact training is going to be the norm for a while longer, even after lockdown is eased. So practice doing it now, working with somebody without touching them. And walk me back, one, two, three. Okay, so that's nine off on me. Now we're gonna do, wow, time three anyway. Okay, we're gonna do number six and number seven together in sequence, so number six, Rock one, off to the side. Number seven, Nana, block, power, step, step, step. Okay? Out! Off to the side, reset. Knee, block, push, step, step, step. Ready, go. Out! Off, knee, block, down, step, step, step. Out! Knee! One more time. Knee. 
So that's the first two. Actually, time is running away, so I'm going to have to race through and do less explanation, so sorry. Right, number eight. Hap on me. Hap on me. Okay. Uke attack. From Kamai, Uke will go one, two. So it's a two stage attack. And that's because Shte gives the command Yoi, which means get ready, and then Hajime, which means go. Okay? So on the Yoi, get ready, Uke changes their posture. This is preparing for a strong thrust, a stab, a ski. Okay? So here, Yoi, get sorry, forwards, get ready, Hajime, attack. And again, Yoi. Get ready, Hajime, attack, and back again. Yoi, ready, Hajime, attack. So that's what Shte is going to deal with. Shte's movement. We'll ignore the sword for a second. Copy my feet. Copy my feet. Yoi, we step back, so now we're ready. On Hajime, we go out. And in again. So step back for yoi on hajime out and in. One more time, copy me. Yoi, say it with me two, step back. Hajime, say it out and back in. That's the footwork, that's out the sword. Yoi, step back and raise here. We're not fully up here because we're not exposing ourselves to being cut. We're here, so it's still like a guard position. On Hajime, out. Now we raise, in. There's the cut. So we are striking them across their body as they come in for the stab, which is now missing us because we're getting out of the way. Yoi, step back, raise up. Hajime, out and strike. Do uh, you pop for context? Yoi, here, I'm ready. As he comes towards me from the south, I get out of the way, step in, and we're striking across the chest. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the count. Yoi, Hajime. Yoi, Hajime. Yoi, get ready. Hey, out, and cut. Reset. Yoi, Hajime, and reset. Strike with purpose. You should be sweaty, even though you don't feel like you're doing very much. Yoi! Jmai! So that's what you're going to do to me. I'm going to be your uke. Okay? I will give the command. Yoi! Raise your sword. When I stab, you're going to get out of the way. And then strike across my chest. Jmai! So I'm yielding so you don't actually hit me. It really winds me up when the uke doesn't yield because I really should have hit them, but it's, you know, it's hard to make yourself do that. Yo, raise your sword. Man, slip, strike. Yo, raise your sword. Man. Okay, we've kind of recovered a bit of time. So that's number eight. Number nine. Ku hon me. Say it. Ku hon me. Number nine. Uh, so number nine uh, introduces our first series of attacks. So far it's been one attack, one reaction. Now it's going to be attack, attack, attack. Okay? Attack, attack, attack. So the uke will be striking yoko on the right, yoko on the left, and shaman down the middle. Stay will be retreating, so we're going to practice that first. Okay, so copy with me, I'll go sideways. Right foot forwards. Raise, shuffle, strike the and right. Raise, step, strike the Ogreman on the left. Raise, step, strike Shawman down the middle. So it's on your right, on your left, down the middle. Okay, copying along. Number one, raise, shuffle, strike. Number two, raise, step, strike. Number three, raise, step, strike. And again, with purpose this time. One, knit two, three. And one more time. One, 
two, three. So that's the attack for this one. The blocks. So the attacks are happening fast and there's forward movement. So Stey's blocks have to account for that. Again, there's not excessive sword work. A block needs to be simple and fast, so don't swing your sword around. The attack is coming on your left, on their right, on your left. So all you do is retreat slightly and put your sword where your neck was. So my neck is here, and now my sword is here. So they hit this. It's now coming on this side. I retreat again, and I swap neck for sword. That's the first two blocks. So copy with me. Shuffle back, replace with the sword. Step back, replace with the sword. Notice how the sword is always on my center line. So many times I see people moving the sword across their line because they're afraid of getting hit. Simple physics, okay? The more something moves, it's either got to move faster or it's going to be slower to get there, okay? Don't move it big, just nip, and it's done. The job's done, okay? So, backwards, sword on the center, backwards, sword on my center. So that's dealing with the first two attacks. The third one coming down on the top, this is where we retaliate, okay? So copy with me. First block, second block. Raise, forwards, pivot, and we're taking their back leg off. So we've got forwards here, so one and two. As he's coming in for his third and final strike, there's a comment there, I'll see that in a second, he's coming with the third and final strike, forwards, around, and we're taking the leg off like so. Who's talking to me, what are you saying? Ah. Hey, can, can. So, block one, block two, forwards raise and round taking the back leg. Okay? We're going to do this now to my count. If you're falling behind or getting confused, fine. Keep moving, get sweaty anyway. Just chop wood for 10 seconds while we do this. Okay? Ouch! Block one, knee, block two, sand, raise, forwards, pivot and cut, reset. Keep the focus. Edge, block, knee, block, sand, forwards, spin, cut, reset. Key out when you strike. I'm not because I'm shouting at you already. I want you to shout when you strike. Edge, block, knee, block, sand, I. She. So, edge, block, knee, block, sand. One more time. So, no, my time is running out. Now I'm going to be your uke, okay? I am going to attack three times. I'm going to block one, block two, slip the third one and take my back leg. Bonus points if anybody actually hits me. Block that. Block that. Then get out of the way of this one and take my leg off. Okay, ready? Edge! Knee! Sun! I want you to be key in, okay? Make some noise. Ouch! Knee! Sun! Okay, that's number nine. Kuhame. Last but not least, number ten. I love number ten. Number ten is, oh, it's electric. When it's done well, um, the entire room shuts up. Nobody can take their eyes away from it, and you get that tingle on the back of your neck. It's just... It's beautiful to watch when it's done well. Done badly, people get hit. So, you know, try and do it well. One of the things that makes number 10 so fun is the, the narrative drama of the whole thing. So normally we start here, swords cross. For number 10, we both move back. So we're now being separated by about approximately four mat widths. And the attacker, slowly moves forwards until they're just outside of striking range and then as soon as they think in one move I've got you they launch the attack so it's really stressful really stressful bang it's happening okay I love number 10 for that so we're going to practice this part first as the uke step backwards and raise your sword here 
Okay, neck to my head. Small step, small step, big step, and it's a yokelman cut, a diagonal cut. Again, nice and slow. Step back and raise. Small step forwards, small step forwards. Don't take out your light pictures. Big step and cut. So that's what we're going to deal with as stay, as the defender. Okay? Doing good. Right. So we've got three minutes. I'm going to rush. I'm sorry, but do your best to keep up. So on yoi, the first command, yoi, stay is going to step backwards, big, zanshin posture, and sword moves here, so it's roughly parallel to their back leg, but the blade is angled forwards. Okay, copy along. Yoi! Step back, lower, and it's angled forwards because it's active, it's threatening, it's not submissive and facing backwards. What we are doing is baiting a trap. We are leaning our head exposed and forwards to give Uke a tempting target. Now they know it's a trap, and we know they know it's a trap, but they cannot resist the bait. It's just too much of an easy target. So as they advance, we're waiting, we're waiting, and then when the strike comes in, we pull back just enough, their sword sails past our face, and then we deliver a cut of our own, okay? So it really is about finesse and timing here. So here, our head is exposed as the strike comes in, Move it back and deliver your attack, and it should just sail past your face. So slowly with me. Yoi! Bait the trap. Wait, wait, wait. Pull back and retaliate. Again. Yoi! Move back, bait the trap. And you may. They walk forward, waiting, waiting, waiting. Pull back and attack. Okay? So, I am going to be your okay for this one. I know we're skipping some detail, okay? I want you to be waiting for me like this. I'm going to slowly approach, and then I'm going to attack. I want you to pull back and strike back. Yeah, it's so difficult. I love it. Okay, so make sure you're ready. As soon as I launch the attack, pull your head away. So I don't hit you. And again, get ready. Now the reason I'm going slowly is because if I get too close, you kill me first. That's why this works, because I'm hitting you at the maximum of my effective range. If I was any closer, you couldn't build far enough away to get out of the way. But if I got that close, you should have gutted me first. Here, your sword is down. One, two, three, go! Good. Right, I'm going to call it there. That's time. Um, I know I said at the beginning that I wanted to go through the entire sequence and build it up uh, so you've got one thing to do, we haven't practiced doing that. Uh, but if you do each one in sequence anyway and send it in, that'll be really appreciated. I'm sure it'll look awesome. Okay, so that is Bokken six to ten. Keep practicing it. When we get back on the mat, if we can do that part, then we should all be able to do it with a partner. Because uh, frankly, this is harder. Genuinely, it is harder to do your, your techniques without context of a partner. So if you're keeping up or even slightly having a go, you are doing enough. You are doing plenty and you will feel the benefits when you're back on the mat. If you're doing nothing because you're thinking oh, it's too hard or what's the point, you're going to be worse when we get back. Okay? Any practice is good practice. Just think about the, uh, the basketball story that we tell in the NLP classes. Uh, if you don't know about that one, uh, shoot me a message, I'll tell you. Okay? But any practice is worth doing. Okay? So, well done and we'll see you again soon. Bye!